Over the next two days, I'll be at Portaventura Theme Park in Spain, where I'll be experiencing some huge roller coasters, indoor attractions, shows, and checking out their newest ride, Uncharted El Enigma de Penitence. So let's drop into Portaventura World. Greetings from the wonderful Port Aventura. Feels quite quiet here on park. It is, of course, just a Wednesday afternoon. However, the queue times just look quite large as I looked at the uh, board there. So uh, I have to go and review that as I get into the park. But this whole area as you enter the park here, it is so stunning. This Mediterranean section, so well put together, so well themed. So we have to take a little look around. So they're really going in with the Easter theming. I would have thought we were out of that period now. I think we get some backhoe. How cool does Furious Baco look over the lake there? So along here you also have the sort of main shops and some of the main dining areas. Really only just one ride in Mediterranean, the rest of it is all the sort of the entrance walkthrough section. But it's all very nice, there's a very cool vibe around here. It feels relaxed, the sunshine doesn't hurt. It does feel like you're just in a Mediterranean seaside village. So apparently Furious Baco is on a one hour, 50 minute queue. That's far too excessive for what is not a particularly great coaster. So let's go for a wander. Baco does often get the larger lines because it's right near the front of the park. But operations at Port Aventura, uh, I mean, they don't have the best reputation here. I've personally not experienced it being too bad here myself, but let's see. So here in Polynesia, it's a real jungle type landscape. I love how the pathways all head in the same direction, but they sort of split up and fork around. So it's really cool, very closed in. So for their faults operationally, what Port Aventura do do exceptionally well is the theming and landscaping of their parks. I mean, it all just looks stunning. This is, in my opinion, almost sort of universal quality. It is such a lovely park to be in and spend some time at. One of the first rides you come to here in Polynesia is Tutiki Splash. And this is a tidal wave style, shoot the shoots, massive splash machine. As with many water rides, it's actually the smaller first drop that gets you more wet than the, uh, the big one. But uh, I think I'm gonna come back to this one later. It's a solid, solid water ride, but uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna get soaked just yet. We'll save that for later or tomorrow. But again, a lovely area around here. Really does feel like you're in the jungle. Just a jungle that has water rides. So they have a Polynesian show here multiple times a day just up on that cool looking stage there. I mean, look at all this, it is so lovely. It's just like being on a, on a lovely beach. As we just come around the corner here, you're gonna see one of the nicest themed pirate ships there is. Yeah, the Kentucky wave is absolutely stunning over the water there. I'll see if I can get a better shot from it around the corner. I love how you can wander up into these quiet little corners. So you see what I mean about attention to detail. It's, uh, this is such a cool park. So you do have a boat ride down here. It takes you from China 
to Polynesia via the uh, water network there. Never done that before, so I'm gonna try and get that done over the next couple of days, because in this weather, it looks like a very picturesque ride. So they also have this magic bubble show here as well, which is uh, on three times today. So again, that's another thing I may come back to and watch. Because I've not really done any of the shows or anything here, and uh, this is my fourth time here. I've got two days on park, so hopefully, I'll be able to experience a few of the rides that I haven't managed to get around to in previous visits, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, my attention does get taken up by Shambhala. And that's why every park should have a hyper coaster. They just dominate the sky, don't they? Subscribe if you like pandas. And just look at that tangled mess of track. Shambhala and Dragon Khan interact so nicely with each other. And over the wall here, the Great Wall of China, I presume. You have the train ride that goes underneath and all the pandas up on the hill there. They are loving life. This is the main square here. It really is quite beautiful. With two big backdrop coasters. Well, the queue times look a lot more favorable up here than they did down on the queue boards because Dragon Khan had over an hour wait on them and it's 20 minutes up here. Let's have a look at Shambhala. I think we have to walk all the way through to get the queue time for that. And there it goes up on its lift hill. Look at the size of it, heading up into the sun for dropping 256 feet. And this is the fantastic entrance plaza for Shambhala Expedition El Himalaya. Starting off in base camp. And then we're about to scale a beast. Well, it does say one hour, 10 minute on the keyboard. I'm gonna have a quick look. To be honest, I'm probably gonna grab a bite to eat and a drink first anyway, but I'm gonna have a quick squeeze at this queue line just to see what it's doing. And indeed, we do have some cattle pen carnage. Whether that's an hour plus, I'm not sure. And these are the awesome clamshell restraints you get on the B&M Hypers. So much freedom. So this section in between China and Sesamo Place provides some fantastic views of Shambhala's main drop and big airtime hill and Dragon Khan around here as well. Look at the tangle of track. So here inside Sesamo Place now and Sesame Street Street Mission, which wasn't open last time I've been here, I've never ridden it, it's on a 10 minute queue. So controversially, I'm gonna make this my first ride of the day. Sesame Street Street Mission was pretty darn good. A trackless dark ride uh, with a slightly messy shooting system, but that didn't detract from what was a really well-themed attraction. Um, some really good animatronics in there, the Sesame Street characters. You sort of follow Detective Grover on a mission to find some uh, stolen cookies or something. And you sort of have to shoot the big cookies, which give you loads of points, and the small cookies, which don't get you many points at all. But, um, yeah, like I say, the shooting system wasn't very intuitive. Like when you shot it, it sort of looped, so you couldn't, uh, yeah, the aiming was a bit off, but 
yeah, a really impressive ride. There was a, a big wraparound screen section there where it, it almost became like a uh, like a simulator with all kinds of action going on. Yeah, a really good mix of effects, practical and, and obviously screen based. I was pretty impressed with that. A good start to the day. I love how Shambhala's huge airtime hill there just towers over Sesame or Sesamo Place. Such a cool visual. And two very different, distinct things, but how wonderful does it look around here, by the way? I mean, this is so well put together. Got a sky rail up there. And a giant tree house right here. But it's so colorful, it's so bright. It really is. I mean, Port Ventura is just a wonderful park to, to walk around. There are, of course, rumors that Universal Studios may be interested in buying it. It is up for sale. And as you walk around, you really feel as though this could be a Universal Studios park with a few of their IPs put in in certain places. But in terms of the standard of theming, uh, they certainly wouldn't have a huge amount to do. Ah, oh, the pigs aren't juggling water today. That's a shame. And we've got another little tracked ride down here. Big Bird and Elmo getting all Mexican. So I'm here at Bora Bora for a bite to eat. They do quite an attractive set menu for 21 euros 90, which had quite a lot of good options. Um, I've gone for a starter of uh, tortilla chips and guacamole. I've then got some teriyaki marinated beef, salad and bread. I have a dessert coming afterwards and the beer was included in that price as well. So not too bad, let's tuck in. So the food at Bora Bora was decent there. Um, the quality was good. I think the price was reasonable for a theme park. And all in all, that was a pretty, pretty good meal, I think. Uh, the only downside was it did take a little while for the food to arrive. So it does eat into your day a little bit. You know, sometimes I question whether Port Ventura gets talked up enough for its standard of theming. Everyone talks about Fantasyland and Europa Park and Efteling in Europe, but I think Port Ventura is right up there. And here we have the coaster building for Uncharted El Enigma de Penitence. This is the newest roller coaster here at Port Ventura. It's an Intamin family launch coaster. Unfortunately, it has an hour and 30 minute queue, so I'm gonna hold fire on that for a little while. I'm going to do some things with slightly smaller queues. My feeling is that um, once some of these schools head out, a lot of these queues are going to die down. So Tomahawk behind me here had quite a serious accident a few months ago when um, during operation on a very windy day, a tree was blown onto the track uh, and did cause some injuries. So it's been closed for quite some time, quite those few months. I've got to say, I didn't expect it to be open when I came out here on my trip. So it's great to see I've got it back open. Such a freak accident, you know, a tree falling down, but... And as you leave the far west, you enter Mexico. That's almost geographically accurate, to be fair. And yet another really nicely themed section of Porta Ventura. Now, if you come here during their Halloween event, this whole area is completely decked out for Day of the Dead. It is really spectacular to see. And I highly recommend it because it's a very cheap time of the year to visit. And they also have a very Day of the Dead influenced merchandise store here as well. So if you take a look up there, you may notice that that drop tower is bloody massive. That's Hurricane Condor, over 300 foot tall. Quite intimidating, but quite a lot of fun too. Well, Hurricane Condor is on a one hour wait and as good as it is, I don't think there's any drop tower that's worth waiting an hour for. So I'm gonna carry on walking, I think. It's one of those days, I think, where it's all about assessing the rides I want to come back and do tomorrow when it should be a little bit quieter. Uh, it is the last day of their Easter event today, so I do anticipate it might be a little bit quieter tomorrow, hopefully. And without question, one of my favorite transitions at Port Ventura World is as you move from Mexico back into China. So as you round the corner here, look at this view. Honestly, one of my favorite reveals in all the theme parks I've been to. Because, you know, that's how you do a coaster skyline right there, isn't it?
Well, it's time to take on a cattle pen, but it has gone down a bit since I was last here. can describe the love that I have for Shambhala. It's just such a good hyper coaster. You really feel that difference in speed with the other B&M hypers with this, in my opinion. The bottom of the drop, you just sort of shake because it's so forceful. And the turnaround is great. Hair time over every hill that lives, particularly over the speed hill. This splash down behind me, the great visual element, but also cool to experience. I think this is comfortably B&M's best hyper coaster. I mean, I hear people talk about Mako all the time, but that feels so tame in comparison to Shambhala for me. I think this is top tier, uh, and a reason to come to Port Aventura. Uh, yeah, come here and ride Shambhala, because it is a banger. So I decided to enter the queue line for Templo del Fuego. I believe this is a dark ride. I've heard quite good things about it. I'm going the wrong way there, into a part of the queue line I shouldn't be going to. Uh, I've, I've managed to never do this on previous occasions. It's a uh, one that's eluded me. I think it was actually closed last time I was here. So yeah, quite interesting to see what this is all about. And as with many of the rides here, the key line theme is pretty impressive. Well, Templo del Fuego is an interesting way to round off the day there. Um, not so much a dark ride as a sort of walkthrough show type attraction with various kind of stunts and special effects led by a single actor. And I'd say it shares quite a lot of DNA with Poseidon's Fury, uh, previously uh, Islands of Adventure. Uh, very similar in style and he sets up with a, a guy in a temple kind of, I assume, because it was all in Spanish, decoding some kind of ancient myth uh, trying to, I think, unlock some sort of portal. Eventually we did end up into a, a bigger show building that had all the kind of the fire, the water effect. At one point there was a, a ceiling of fire, which was quite cool. And um, yeah, it was decent. It was nothing spectacular. I don't think it was as good as Poseidon's Fury, but still some cool effects in there. Um, yeah, pretty fun show. This is the weird, sort of Tom Holland. So just rode Uncharted there. There is a full review uh, I'm gonna to upload to the channel. It would have gone on before this video, actually. Um, I thought it was good. It was solid, um, some good elements in there. Uh, it's fully multi-dimensional, so it does spin and go backwards and have launches and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely recommend it. It is uh, much more of a dark coaster than a themed coaster. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that. I thought it did a lot of things well and a few things not so well. One thing I really like here at Port Aventura is how they leave a lot of these bars and restaurants open well after closing time here in Mediterranean. It really does create this lovely atmosphere as you leave the park. It just feels like a weekend evening in a small Mediterranean village. It really is a, a lovely atmosphere. It just creates such a nice vibe in the park. Well, good morning from day two at Port Aventura. Another quite busy day by the looks of it, but I'm gonna head around the park, get on some coasters, try and ride a few bits I didn't do yesterday. So a slight pivot and starting the day with El Diablo Mine Train on a 20 minute wait, that's not too bad.
heading into the back row of Elder Ablo. Just waiting for them to clear up the sick first though. Beautiful. The El Diablo mine train is pretty good fun. It's a, it's a very interestingly paced ride, but we'll come to that in a second. One thing I've always loved about it is the way it interacts with the log flumes. The first starter ride is almost entirely over the log flume section, including one drop over there, which in the back row absolutely yeeted me out of my seat, which I wasn't expecting. Like I said, the pacing issues kind of kick in in the second half. You have two more lift hills, but the one behind me there is the final lift hill and drop of the ride. Uh, which I think may be the tallest one as well. The, the middle section of the ride is really, feels really off compared to the rest. It's, it's very odd pacing, but fairly good fun. A little bit of a rattle. Obviously, had to wait around because someone yanked their guts up on the train. Which is odd because it's not particularly extreme, but there you go. So Hurricane Condor is just testing ahead of opening at 11 o'clock. Unfortunately, the key for it is already massive. So Serpiente Emplumada, can't believe I got that right first time, is uh, this cool little flat ride here. I think we're going to jump on this. It is quite forceful, quite entertaining. I've also seen someone take a bag on there and have it huzzed out the side at about 40 miles an hour before, so don't do that. Serpiente Emplumada was uh, fun, forceful, really good ride there. I, I enjoy those type of things, those octopus type, type flat rides. Like I say, they pull some nice forces. You don't get thrown around in any weird awkward positions either so yeah good fun all round it's so weird seeing that big uncharted building there now definitely changes the skyline a little around here so uncharted currently has a one hour 20 minute standby line i did have a quick look at the single rider line just to see if that was a uh, any good but uh, that seemed very busy too so I may come back to that one later I think it's obviously going to get the bigger lines being the most recent attraction but uh, all the coasters have pretty hefty weights for right now a bit like yesterday so I think I may leave those until later this afternoon and, and tick off a few other rides instead also starting to get a bit warmer now so that certainly opens up the water rides and we've got some entertainment here we've got some action going on So in terms of transport here at Port Ventura, they do obviously have the boat which I mentioned yesterday. However, there is this train line as well which takes you around various sections of the park. Obviously you get to see things from different angles, so yeah, it may take a trip around the train a little later on. Yeah, all very well themed through here. They really have gone in with the old old west theme. I know a lot of the American enthusiasts find it quite amusing that so many European parks have these kind of Old West areas, but uh, yeah, I guess it's one of those things where it's, uh, it's quite an easy look and feel to replicate. It's a bit like how there are dinosaur Jurassic Park areas in so many theme parks as well. So like I said, it's getting a bit warm now. It's a 10 minute wait for the log flume. Let's do it. Ugh, and trip myself up as I enter the queue line. You always get world class content here on Loop Theme Park Adventures. And you can see there where the mine train interacts, that the track comes that close. And it was that bend up there, I don't think you can see it, pointing at it right there. Yeah, that drop off that was, uh, was pretty fierce. Well, I'm a bit damp now. You know how I said um, earlier in the video when I was here yesterday, it's them first little drops that get you. Yeah, the two first drops on that absolutely drenched me. The big one at the end, hardly anything. But yeah, so wet times, but fun. Really enjoyed that. The interactions with the mine train are fantastic. Like it came right above us and up the side, all sorts, awesome. But yeah, it's a good little log flume, but uh, yeah, just about the right weather for it, just. So up next, uh, seeing it's got a 50 minute line, I'm gonna go and do a Huss break dance, crazy barrel style. 
It's been a while since I've done a break dance. This should be quite good fun. That was pretty good fun. Not the most intense cycle for a break dance by any means. Certainly the second half going the other way, it barely moved at all. But first half was decent, pretty forceful in places. Can't really go wrong with a Hus break dance really. Well, you don't see that every day in the old west. Well, the queue for the rapids looks fairly short and seeing as I'm already wet, I may as well. Oh, well, Grand Canyon Rapids is pretty good fun. It quite swiftly moves you along um, it's not the wettest by any means, uh, unless of course you get done by one of these guns around here, which I did right in the back of the neck. Lovely stuff. Now, unfortunately, I mean, as is the case, I'm on my own. It's obvious that I'll be batched with some other people on the on the boat. Um, three of them decided to stand up as we went past a, uh, a waterfall, which is exactly the kind of reason why waterfalls get switched off at places like Alton Towers. So yeah, not a fan of seeing that. It was such an obvious safety thing. And like I say, people behaving like that is the reason why we have elements turned up on these attractions, why seat belts get introduced and that sort of thing. So yeah, do better people. <laughs> Sit down your belly. I do love this bridge here. The, the views from both sides are so nice. Mediterranean, looking a little quieter than earlier, so I'm gonna have a wander around, look at what the food options are. Yeah, definitely a lot quieter around here than it was earlier. It does look like Furious Baco, so that's quite the line though, so we'll see what the uh, wait time is. I think half the problem is that it's, it comes out so slowly. I mean, the last, uh, the last cycle was when I was up on the bridge over there and I walked all the way down here. It's not a long coaster, but they do take their time getting them out. Well, Furious Baco still has an hour and a half wait. And while the launch is fun, it is so rattly that I refuse to wait anywhere near that length of time for it. I've done it multiple times before. Like I say, it's a fun launch, but after that it is just sitting on a washing machine, essentially. So unfortunately you can't access the boat. It is a... Uh, closed off not sure why but yeah nice views from here however you can access this boat you're not gonna lie this is this is a bit of a vibe right now laid back music awesome views and chilling on a random boat. So the line looks to be around the same as it was yesterday, which is about half an hour. They do have a single rider over there too, but that looks pretty long. Well, approximately 30 minutes later and I've made it here. Very slow moving. Well, yesterday I waited 30 minutes for a queue that was advertised as 50. And today I waited around 50 minutes for a queue advertised as 30. So I guess they balance each other out. Um, I did kind of get my first glimpse of Port Aventura's poor operations on that occasion though, with uh, them loading literally full trains of fast pass, which, yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's too great at all. But Shambhala is still one of the best roller coasters in Europe. One of my favorite roller coasters out there. Still a top 10 for me. You can watch my top 10 list up on that link up there somewhere if you like. But uh, yeah, Shambhala top tier. 
The downside of waiting that long for Shambhala though is I missed the last bubble show of the day, uh, which is a shame, it would have been cool to see that, but uh, it's the way it goes. Well, certainly looks like I got on at the right time. Well, it looks like Hurricane Condor didn't actually open today. It's uh, still closed. People are getting in the queue anyway. Not sure why. It looks like we have a bit of activity up here. Hey, listen, baby. It's the drop on a Vulture's got attitude. So penitent school here is used as a scare maze during their uh, Halloween event. Well, Stampede is a CCI Woody. It is a little bouncy in places, could certainly do with some track work. Uh, it does feel as though it's got worse since I was last here a couple of years ago, but it's a reasonably fun layout. Um, the lack of dueling or lack of racing, should I say, was a bit odd, because being on the blue train, the red train was behind us. The lift hills don't seem to be synced at all there, to be honest, but uh, it was an odd sensation because it just felt like I was being chased throughout the whole track, being sat on the back as I was, but it's decent, glad I got back on it. So as you see, as they go up the lift hill, they go up very slowly, they'll stop slow to almost crawl, and then the blue one will, will move forward ahead of the red. I'm not sure why it's doing it, but yeah. And there goes the blue. Well, single rider looked quite busy, so I just came to the main queue, and this is way shorter than it was yesterday. I was queuing all along here, so fingers crossed. So just had my second ride on Uncharted there and obviously now able to take in a few more of the elements and the effects. I think the screens really hurt that ride. I genuinely think it'll be a lot better without them. There's one section in particular when you come up to the first screen where you run a corner and it's complete darkness and the screen just comes on. The problem with that is that there's, there's loads of background and stuff in the, uh, in the imagery. So it's like none of that stuff existed until the characters arrived. Very odd. But I think the ride system is great. Uh, I really think as an indoor coaster, it's really solid. I almost wish it was just an indoor coaster in the dark. I think it would be a better uh, and much more fun attraction, but I guess they had an IP to satisfy. <laughs> So that's all from my two days here at Porta Ventura World. It's been fantastic to get back here at this beautiful theme park. There are, of course, rumors that it's up for sale and that Universal may be interested in taking it back over again. I think that'd be fantastic because there are just one or two little things that let this place down and they're quite easy fixes. So um, obviously, operations are not always the quickest, but I wouldn't say they're like offensively slow either. Certainly, um, it's not felt that way whenever I'm in a station, however, the way they manage fast pass, particularly on Shambhala, um, yeah, that really needs to be dealt with because letting full trains of fast pass go through, I mean, you understand that maybe like three, four, five, maybe even more rows will go to fast pass, but yeah, filling an entire train when you've got a queue that's been waiting there for the best part of an hour and isn't moving, it, it just kind of breeds resentment and that's not a good look, I don't think. Otherwise though, I mean, I think they've got some fantastic rides here. Shambhala is one of the best coasts in Europe. Obviously Red Force, which you might see behind me. It's in the distance, background there somewhere. And I think Uncharted is a really good addition as well. Despite my feelings about the dark ride elements, the coaster itself, really, really good. Adds something completely different to the park. So on the whole, really happy to get back here. It's one of those parks that I can always recommend. It's good value to get out here. Uh, I have actually been doing a, a budget theme park guide that I've been filming while I'm out here. That'll be up on the channel soon. <laughs> I think that might be one of the weakest fountain displays I've seen. It was literally 
a bunch of families doing the exactly same sequence over and over and over again to the Port of Ventura theme, which is just repeated about three times. I'm not sure why they did that, but there we go. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.